Hello, I'm Jeff Harold from the Lake County Art League, and I'm here talking to Richard Medina, who is one of the five rising stars in the art world that were exhibited at the College Lake County in the Robert T. Wright Gallery. Uh, and Richard, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and background. Sure. And uh, my name is Richard. Uh, I recently, in, oh, I guess it's May of last year, so May 2021, graduated from uh, the School of the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, I'm turning 23 uh, in uh, a week, two weeks. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm just, a, I guess I'm, I'm an emerging, emerging uh, artist in Chicago. Um, I was in, as you mentioned, the, that group show in uh, Grays Lake at College of Lake County um, with a few other artists. Uh, I'm a painter, so I do um, these really uh, uh, chaotic, um, information-heavy paintings, um, linking together different uh, narratives and like history and mythology uh, and literature. Um, uh, I rely heavily on using uh, image transfer techniques and silk screening. Um, so it's a lot of um, appropriated imagery from different sources. Um, like I, I think about maybe half of my process happens in Photoshop when I'm kind of figuring stuff out and I do massive uh, image transfers and paint and screen print on top of them. Um, and uh, yeah, I uh, uh, last year I, I curated, co-curated, I should say, um, a group show at uh, Heaven Gallery in Chicago, which is an alternative art space um, with uh, a bunch of other artists um, who are kind of in a similar position as me, having just either recently graduated or still in school or recent MFA uh, in the Chicago area who are um, working in with similar ideas and similar methods. Uh, the show is called Inflorescence. Uh, and that what, happened. When it, when <laughs> is that show? Sorry. When is that show? It is so. This happened. So this was back. I'm just thinking of things that have happened recently. So oh, this okay. Was in, uh, All right. October. Yeah. October to November of, of last year. So it it just ended, and that was really fun being to curate and participate in that. Um, and yeah, right now I'm just kind of uh, making work. Kind of grinding. Okay. Well, it, yeah, I've had this discussion with some other artists also. Uh, what would you, how would you describe your work, or what would you call it if you if you had like a category? And I know that's really yeah. hard to do and might not meaningful. But what would you? Because it, it's it's definitely not abstract. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I think and about it. That's like you because I I mean I kind of have I think about them as abstract paintings that it's it's hard for because it's like it's not really um, figurative in the sense that I'm painting figuratively the paint the brush strokes that I make are all very gestural and um, gloopy and like building on the surface and building up paint layers um, so I do weirdly think about them as abstract but um, <clears throat> I guess they take they take a lot from uh, um, like uh, um, I guess Robert Rauschenberg would be an obvious kind of influence his method of like appropriation and assemblage um, and uh, other kind of like uh, 1980s like German painters like Sigmar Polka um, where they're kind of it's kind of like uh, post um, post abstract expressionism post pop art uh, kind of reaching backwards through history and pulling on different um, imagery and uh, themes and narratives and kind of bringing them into the present moment and making those um, kind of stuffy historical things uh, relevant to the to today. I, I notice that in a lot of your work it, it definitely is relevant to today uh, and it's, it's part of why I say, you know, this doesn't fit in the category of abstract to me because, you know, the 
pure technical term abstract would be no emotion, uh, no content, context, or anything to it. I mean, that's, that's your pure abstract, at least my understanding. So, and I know Malik and I were talking about this and decided that his could be referred to as like abstract landscape to a lot. Mm -hmm. But yours has a lot more uh, meaning, in this, meaning in it and obvious, which I think is a good, a good thing because mm. it, it lets people understand what you're trying to say and what you're trying to tell. I, I know I got behind me here, we just already mentioned it, uh, one of your pictures of the fall. And I'm going to switch to it for a second. All right. And this uh, to me is, uh, you know, a comment on our environmental problems. Is that what you intended for it? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, uh, um, with the forest fire uh, kind of in the background, it's kind of a um, has all these. I actually, I, I'm, I'm. This painting in particular, uh, I feel like is probably. Um, I, I'm not sure if I like this painting because it, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, kind of, in all of my work, I'm trying to, uh, 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 convey, um, um, information and convey kind of a thesis. Um, but the, 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 um, issue with that is being too, um, kind of sophomoric and, uh, 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 kind of blatant and on the nose. And, um, I thought this was a really clever idea when I did it, having the L falling because it's fall and the L is falling. But, um, now that I'm looking at it, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if it's too, uh, I don't know. It feels a little like, one liner y. Um, maybe I can talk more about this series I, in general. The, uh, yeah, the, the, the yeah, that's series. fine. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, the L falling, I mean, I've mentioned this with other artists also when they do something like this. This takes me right back to E.E. E. Cummings' poetry. Because mm -hmm. his was actually a visual work. You couldn't just read it, you had to see it. And he'd do things like do the lettering like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and and that, that's what uh, that's what I like. I I personally sort of like this one. <laughs> so yeah, no, I mean I, I think um, this this was a series of, of four different paintings that were exploring the idea of um, I, when I was making them. It was it was uh, in the, the fall of last year, um, and. Uh, um, Chicago is weird because it's like it has these awful, incredibly humid, um, buggy summers, and then it's like fall and pleasant for like two weeks, and then it shifts to um, terrible, awful, <laughs> cold, freezing <laughs> winters. Um, and this past fall was uh, it was like fall for like three months, like it was just it was beautiful out, and it was uh, the yeah. you know autumn leaves and the colors were amazing. It was pleasant out, like I just could just wear like a light jacket. So I was like walking around a lot and um, just existing outside. Um, and that also, I mean, it had this kind of um, edge to it, I guess, because the reason that it's fall for so long is because of climate change, obviously, um, where the, the summer is extending into, into winter. Um, yeah. So I was kind of ha dealing with this uh, 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 double-sided Kind of experience of, of being out uh, and getting you know pumpkin spice lattes and going walking around <laughs> stepping on leaves and then uh, but then also being like oh okay so this is the end of the world um, so I, yeah I was kind of thinking of that, of that idea of how like um, poetic and punning the word fall is in that moment of the kind of fall um, from summer to winter the fall of 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 uh, us into uh, destruction, uh, the fall of leaves, uh, and then there's all these like literary falls. It's a very kind of um, loaded idea, like the fall of the angel, uh, 
Lucifer in um, uh, Paradise Lost. And um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so I, I was kind of playing with the, this idea of different uh, falling and then the okay. word fall. Um, and then <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to experience, experience falling. Um, so I went um, skydiving uh, uh, in uh, you're, November. But you're um, a braver man than I am. <laughs> yeah, I was very, it was very impulsive. I uh, just went by myself. Um, I didn't really tell anyone. I just went, I just went tandem skydiving. Uh, and it was, it was crazy. It was, it was incredibly intense. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like that's connected somehow, but um, yeah. So with those paintings, okay. I, I was, you know, like trees falling and yeah. um, I was kind of play, like try, stretching out that word. And if you um, go to my website, you can see the let's, other three. Okay. Things. Let's do that right now. Yeah. Okay. And whoops, there we go. Now I I noticed that your website sort of loads slowly. <laughs> Might be something to work on. I don't know if it's yeah. the image, the size of the image files, or if it's the or if it's the website thing. On yeah, I, I don't know because uh, I have a fast. It's also there's a lot of images on the page. Yeah, I'll have to figure out something. I still use Weebly. <laughs> I might have to switch to like a real uh, website maker. Um, but if you, I guess, scroll down to the ones with the, yeah, down. See so if I can get down here a little bit. Yeah. Okay, we have a couple that I'm gonna want to come back to here. Well, here's here's the first so one that we're one. just looking so at. Okay, uh -huh. now, what about this one? So this one um, is kind of, I was, I was um, like writing the word fall and, and kind of scribbling it out and um, I, I've been in my paintings recently I've been playing with scale so um, and and um, layers so this one there's less of a of a um, kind of I guess message in this one I'm kind of playing with the words more and you can see yeah. the kind of the gestural marks of the L's now there are those like extra ones in the bottom left yeah, corner. It's kind of very. They're like very violent and slashing, and then you have that yeah, cut out this, of the. Of the this axe. to me is more abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, so so playing with scale too because that's that's my that's my. Um, I wrote I I drew that very small and then blew it up and screen printed it. So there's kind of this this like um, playing with layers of of uh, mark making. Because it's mechanical, because it's screen printed, but it's also, um, it's very, it's a very gestural uh, mark. And then I actually yeah. did it by own hand. And then this kind of uh, clear scribbly thing is a thing I did in Photoshop um, before I uh, transferred the image. So it's this very digitally uh, unreal kind of mark. Yeah. Um, but you can see it's just like a mouse like squiggling around and then it's transferred to panel so it's it's kind of mushing the layers of like digital and um, um, I guess what's what's the opposite of digital analog analog <clears throat> analog um, and then uh go on. there's wait if you could stay on that one oh okay um, yep. there's like yep. I, I, I kind of question when I'm making things like how much of the things that I put into it I'm expecting the audience to uh, infer from it. So a lot of some, many times I, I'll put something in that I know is there and means something to me, but I'm, uh, it's very unlikely that anyone will will uh, um, see it or draw it out or like look into it and tie it to other things. Um, but it's still there, so I guess that it's still. It is part of the image. So if you look in the upper left hand corner in the background, there's this very dim kind of image of like, mm -hmm. uh, it's like a it's, canyon or a gorge. Yeah, cliffs um, and <clears throat> looks like someone walking there almost. Yeah, yeah. So that, that so painting it's... is from, uh, I'm blanking on the artist's name, but it, back in like the 1800s when, uh, early 1800s, I think 
when they were exploring the um, during westward expansion um, there was this artist that was commissioned by uh, the government to go out to the west coast and 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 do these paintings um, of these landscapes to bring them back to the capital and be like look this is what's you know on the west side and the painting yeah. the paintings are beautiful but they're always they're so like grand and vast and they're so empty but like there's no humans in them yeah so it's this very kind of like huh. again double-edged thing of like this beautiful immaculate um landscape but then it's also like this implicit uh uh edge of um manifest destiny of like there's no one here don't look at all the you know people were murdering and, and genociding don't look at that look at this beautiful landscape yeah. um so that kind of kind of inserting that into there and with the axe and i guess you can see in the bottom uh of the other painting i'm kind of bringing in uh, paul bunyan but that's what i was thinking of too was this kind of like um with all these these paintings thinking about westward expansion and, and the kind of double nature of a lot of these uh okay Th and this is the one you're, you're talking about then yeah this one's one of them. you got another one later i want to talk to you about we'll go that in a minute <clears throat> yeah so um yeah i mean it, it there's there's you know uh paul bunyan is this uh american um folk hero of this giant man that um, uh, was a lumberjack and would cut down trees and, and uh, sort of like a Johnny Appleseed type figure. Um, Along with his ox. Course, now it's like, yeah, Babe the Blue Ox. Yeah. Um, babe. And, oh, Babe. Uh, That's right. Yeah, Babe. Um, and uh, so there's all this like kind of like American ness and nostalgia and uh, uh, kind of pureness in the figure of yeah. like. Paul Bunyan, of course, now thinking about it, it's like, okay, you're talking about clear cutting forests yeah. and um, it's uh, the ecological damage. And then also, again, westward expansion of yeah. driving. Well, and, uh, let's yeah. let's go to your yeah. other Paul Bunyan one here because I think that's clear. If I can find it here. Here you go. Now, this one. I really take this, and I think you and I have talked about this a little bit uh, when we were talking last week, uh, because it's, to me, the clear story here is that all these wildfires we're having are a lot, to, can be blamed on the clear cutting and the logging mm -hmm. and things like that. And are, yeah, it's sort of like a ghost, like a ghost, the ghost of the specter of Paul Bunyan um is you know emerging through the fog of these uh, uh uh forest fires it's very kind of uh yeah um yeah i mean there's uh, you you kind of said it uh with, with this with this painting um yeah okay let's go on and see what else we got here this was sort of interesting just the <laughs> the smiley face on it um, I, I feel like you were in a humorous mood when you did this one <laughs> yeah I, um i mean it's great yeah I mean. <laughs> so this one um yeah you know it's it's uh the title is galapagos um and uh yeah it's a big smiley face and like a nuclear explosion uh, yeah i know um, <laughs> so you know it, I, I i feel like the the like i don't know I, I, it's kind of this half satirical half serious kind of um um uh, wish for the world to just explode and everyone to just yeah. be like and for you know marine iguanas to just take over the planet now, I think that would be great. I think that would be Yeah, great. and be when I was looking at this, I was just thinking about this because I just finished watching the uh, Matthew Broderick version of Godzilla. Oh, oh my gosh. I grew up <laughs> on that movie. I grew up on that and then and then all of the uh like Japanese Godzilla. Yeah. Godzilla I love Godzilla. Yeah. I have some God I have a one or two Godzilla paintings like from years ago. I think I still have on the website. Um but yeah, that's uh in the opening, right? There's the uh, 
the opening credits, there's like a sh yeah. shots of the bombs, and then there's like the nuclear. Yeah, fest. the mushroom cloud and explosions yeah, yeah. And, and everything, and then then that Godzilla's the mutation that's resulted mm -hmm. from it. So, okay, well, let's <laughs> head on. So, yeah, okay, it's right here. This is the, this one, this one. So I did this series. I um, let's see here. Uh, hang, hang, so, hang on here because yeah there it is we can sell it so the, the Paul Bunyan one was the first one and then that's four. Oh, 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 that that's right that's three this is two, because I forgot you had named us Enceladus Enceladus right right so um, and, Enceladus it, is this it, uh, kind of oh go ahead I was going to say it, we talked about this before explain for everyone who Enceladus was yeah, so um, it's it's this um, um, kind of an annoyingly opaque uh, title for these paintings, uh, and uh, and that that's unfortunate. I don't know. There's no other. I, it's a very hyper specific thing that I'm just doing, and, and unfortunately, it kind of, there's kind of a limit to how, uh, at least for now, how accessible I can be, um, and that's something I'm working on. But. Um, and so this was this Greek uh, 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 mythic uh, giant um, who uh, fought. Uh, there was like a war or something between the giants and the Greek gods, and and so this was the the main opponent of Athena, who was a, a Greek uh, god of uh, wisdom. Or, um, and then uh, she, you know, defeated him, and and he was buried in the rubble underneath uh, Mount Etna, but according to the myth. Um, I had recently finished Moby Dick by Herman Melville, uh, and the book he wrote immediately after that is called Pierre or the Ambiguities, um, which is his attempt to do like a, uh, like a um, Wuthering Heights or a Jane Eyre type novel. Um, so like a gothic uh, uh, I guess like a, a, a gothic novel set in New York um, and it's like widely considered to be his worst book um, it is not uh, it's not a good book <laughs> it's extremely um, I mean it, it's like beautifully written because it's Melville but it's like it's just so frustrating to to, to read it, um, um, compared to some of his other books but at the end of the book, as I was reading this, there's this um, kind of random dream sequence where the main character, Pierre, envisions himself as, as this uh, Enceladus who's kind of buried um, halfway uh, in the grounds. Uh, um, but it's a, uh, he's an American Enceladus, so he's not buried by Mount Etna, but he's buried in like upstate New York. And it, it's, it's this kind of parallel between the character of Pierre because he looks at it and it's like oh it has my face um, um, the the idea is kind of changing this uh, two-dimensional villain of Enceladus to being this more complicated um, Promethean kind of uh, figure that's mapped onto the main character of Pierre and um, taking that kind of the the mythical uh, uh, story of Enceladus trying to battle Athena and get to Mount Olympus as a broader um, uh, metaphor for uh, attempting to um, fight against some massive hegemony, huge kind of thing that's ultimately futile, but it's about that fight against it. And it, it's like it makes more sense in the context of the book because Pierce realizing like oh it's me against the world. Uh, uh, well, <laughs> I think really I think this uh, to me, you know that uh, the Greek you know myth, the giant Enceladus, Enceladus was actually blamed for volcanoes and earthquakes. Mm -hmm. And you know when I you know, read that, this picture of the American Enceladus, that 
uh, that connected for me. Totally, right? totally. Because totally. you know, here he is. You know, he also used uh, uh, tree trunks as spears. Yeah, um, just another detail. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I that that thing of, of of Melville kind of twisting this character to be more nuanced and more like a Prometheus character. I thought, I mean, it kind of led me to think of this whole kind of like double-edged idea of of uh, westward expansion. So, like with Paul Bunyan, you know, I'm calling him American Enceladus because he's giant and Enceladus was giant, yeah. but he also has that kind of double-edged nature, but in the reverse, where he's um, this like folk hero, but then it's kind of has he's like I said earlier, he's like a specter of of uh, manifest destiny. And then, um, yeah, it, uh, kind of, and then like this, this kind of, um, Enceladus is uh, fight against this overwhelming uh, uh, power. Um, I think is very uh, relevant today, as um, as you know, U.S. citizens and and taxpayers and voters. Um, there's kind of this uh, seemingly futile uh, uh, Sisyphean um, fight against the kind of current power structure of the United States um, that um, when I'm feeling pessimistic feels futile. Um, yeah. So it was kind of that kind of that's kind of where I was thinking when I was making these paintings. These these paintings are not large. They're um, all of these ones are, are twelve inches by sixteen inches, so they're they're very kind of like they're like the size of like your torso. Um, yeah. So well, they're, they're they're very. They almost have to be because of the photo transfer process, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've done some larger ones, um, um, but I think having them having them. I thought it would. I thought it'd be a funny idea to to paint giants, but tiny, um, <laughs> and they're very kind of manageable. And they kind of have these. Uh, they fit together. I, they work on their own, but I think when you put them together in like a either a grid or in a row, um, they have this kind of. Uh, they come together as something that that has a, a larger kind of. Um, um, ex it's so it's a different experience seeing them all together as opposed to one by one I think yeah um, yeah okay uh, let's uh, let's go back here okay uh, th these are obvious your newer ones. Yeah, yeah. They're diptychs. Okay. You want two panels? Talk a little bit about them, or sure. So um, these these the photos that are on. Um, so these are diptychs. They're two different panels that are stuck together. I guess they're not stuck together, but they I I hang them touching. Um, and then the photos that are on either the right or the left, um, I took in uh, went on a, a road trip. Uh, a few months ago with some friends to um, Lake Superior uh, and uh, actually so did you see the, sh the show the Rising Stars show yes yeah so they the, the two uh, Sadie and Kaylee are the two people who made the um, those awesome like faces like the the ceramic pieces those sculptures um, and they're like had all these different beautiful different like rocks Every single one of those rocks, Sadie and Kaylee uh, uh, hand collected from different beaches in in Chicago and then um, Wisconsin, I think, in Michigan. Um, so it, it, the road trip was to go to Lake Superior uh, and help them get get rocks to use in their um, <laughs> in their, in their ceramics. Um, but as I was there, I, I, I was having this very um, uh, capital R romantic kind of like wandering around all this you know natural like the, the feeling the, the overwhelming kind of emotion of like the landscape 
and like you know going off uh, on the beaches and just wandering around and just uh, kind of existing there. I took some photos um, of the uh, from around there. So like this one that you see at the top, uh, there is a rock knight right? um, cart, not cart, but a scratched uh, a hangman with some with some uh, uh, lines, and then I took a photo of it. Um, oh, okay. So I, I, uh, so that red is just the rock. Is that right? The red. Oh, yeah. Okay. So then, uh -huh. and then I, I screen printed, I traced and then screen printed larger the scratches onto the left. And then I also screen printed using the red onto the photo. So that's not, oh. the red oh, okay. is, is All right. ink. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I just had this idea of, I, with all these, I wanted to like impress uh, or have this kind of like, impression that someone had been there i mean I, I, in the one the the third one down it literally says uh, richard was here on a rock um and uh yeah i don't know these are very kind of uh, uh yeah richard was here with the, with the birds um i the, these paintings are very kind of uh, they're different in the sense that they're not like directly um you know political or have a deeper kind of like literary reference or you know uh, justification they're just very kind of um um still and slow and i just wanted to make very kind of quiet um emotional paintings yeah. um with these with this diptych thing okay interesting yeah okay Go back to our smiling faces here. So, what do you have planned as far as uh, do you have a, a direction you want to go with your art? Do you want to just yeah? So um, you exploring? mentioned the uh, uh, with the um, twelve by sixteen. There's a limit to the uh, image transfer. It's a very labor intensive uh, process because I have to like manually scrub away the paper and I always get blisters every time I do it um, and so if I'm making lots of paintings it's very intensive and it's always it's not you know it, it's not the best I, um, I think I've pushed that as much as I can um, I've been doing image transfers for uh, five years a long time and I've, I've kind of gotten to the point where I'm I, I feel like I've kind of exhausted the potential of image transfer so actually this is exciting i uh i got this back today um before we did it. uh but my roommate uh spencer works at a sign shop um peterson brothers plastics um and uh i've been experimenting with um what is it called uh uv printing on on uh acrylic so here I got this back today um, this is acrylic this is so it's plastic yeah um, but it's been printed with this thing I made in Photoshop um, so the colors are really intense um, and uh, I can basically do anything it's this kind of medium small size but they can, I can go as large as I want and then um, I'm thinking of, uh, I can screen print on top of this, and I can also do like impasto painting on top of this, uh, and it can really be whatever size um, I want to do. Um, so that's kind of where I'm headed next. Uh, I need to do some like material tests on this to see um, if it, how it responds to uh, different mediums and, and, and uh, yeah, how screen printing works with it. Yeah. So that's where I'm going uh, in terms of work that I'm making, which is kind of exciting. Um, as for shows, um, I don't know if I can announce this, but I'm in a, uh, a group show at um, Co Prosperity, which is an alternative art space in Chicago. Um, it was supposed to happen in February, but I think they're postponing it until yeah. the end of February. There's no date yet, so it, who knows if I, it will happen. But I, uh, I think that's on your website, isn't it? I think I remember reading that. 
Oh, yeah, I think I, 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 I it's definitely on my CV. I, I add stuff to my CV as soon as I, so maybe I, I have soft announced it, but um, the date is on is not set at the moment. I thought it would be in February, but uh, it's been postponed a bit. So, yeah. but that's the next thing. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, I'm, I'm uh, you know, just trying to make a lot of work. Um, and uh, yeah, that's kind of where I am right now. All right. Well, I think we're running out of time here, but uh, it's been great talking to you. Yeah, and thank you for interviewing. I hope to see some more, more of your work in the future. Hopefully, you'll too. you have some more work, uh, another show up at the uh, college or somewhere up for north. sure. I, I really Where? enjoyed um, that show. So maybe there's other um, places that are outside of the city that were like to show me um, yeah, yeah there there are a number of places out in this area I mean people think we're out in the wilderness but it's <laughs> it's not quite that bad yet but mm -hmm. uh, yeah if you, you check it out and there are museums in this, uh, uh, places up here that actually host shows uh, the Adler Cultural Center at Libertyville mm. is a good example. Uh, a little plug for myself here: we got a, a, a member show there coming up in February, uh, and it's a a nice place to show. It is. It's so, a yeah. It's a beautiful gallery, and the um, yeah, and the curator uh, I think runs the gallery. Uh, it's wonderful and a great curator, wonderful yeah. person. Um, yeah, so, okay. Well, again, thank you for taking the time. Thank you and, for having uh, me. Best of luck, and we hope we see some of your work in the future here. See where you're going. Thank you so much. So, okay, thanks. Bye.